Hey guys, today we're going to do a review uh, and announce the giveaway winners for these little guys. These are Natural Intimacy is the brand name. They are natural sea sponges and we use them for a couple different things. And so I'm going to talk to you about my experience with those and give you kind of a review on this type of product and this product from Natural Intimacy in particular. Um, and if you want to see, if you, if you entered the giveaway and you want to see if you won uh, one of the packets of sponges, then look down in the description and there will be a time marker there that you can click on and you can skip the review and go straight to the giveaway winners. I figure that's the way so that nobody has to sit in suspense and listen to me talk or search for it with the little scroll bar. Um, but first I'm going to do the review because, you know, a week from now, people coming to this video, they're going to want to watch the review and not necessarily the giveaway winner thing. So that'll be at the end, but if you want to go to it straight away, you can click down there. Okay, so I opened one packet of these um, that had two sponges. They were both roughly this size, although this one was always a different shape. Um, and I tried them in their original size, and then afterwards I discovered they were just too big for my use, and so I clipped this one down, and I took about that much off of the sponge uh, when I cut it. Um, and that's what I encourage anybody who gets one of these products to do. You're going to get some cuts of them, and they may very well be too large for your comfort for whatever you're using them for. So when you do that, you, you can take a pair of scissors, you could cut it in half, and then you would have two you see. Now the general wisdom on this is that these will last for about three months before you need to replace them. However, I have now been using these, I've used them for four cycles now, um, and they, they're not breaking down, the texture has not changed, I don't see any reason, they still come extremely clean, you know, and you can go through them, because trust me, I was down there with a flashlight, because I'm telling you, if you haven't seen the previous video where I unboxed these and I talked about all of the proposed uses for and my feelings about the prospect of using these, you really should go and watch it. But trust me, they do come clean and after four months, I'm seeing no sign of needing to replace this yet. Um, uh, no pieces are coming off, it's not deteriorating. So I think that that's just kind of a rough guideline, not necessarily after the third month you need to throw it away. I think that's kind of a, you can expect it to at last, you can expect these to last you at least three months, uh, depending on what you're using them for and, and how you choose to clean them. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to a clip and I'm gonna just kind of go chronologically because the first thing you do when you get them, these came in a box like this, um, and they had been washed but not sterilized. And I'm going to show you what I do to sanitize my sponges um, at the end of each cycle or before I start using them again. Uh, and then, uh, so we'll go over to a new clip for that and then I'll come back and talk to you about more stuff. The first thing you want to do is heat up some water. Now, you don't want to pour boiling water on your sponges on a regular basis because my understanding is that will change and damage the texture. But my first time I did this, I did use boiling water and it didn't seem to affect them in any way. And you also need hydrogen peroxide and a small bowl. Now I wait till the water's boiling and then I turn it off and let it cool down a little bit. You wanna let it cool down for just a few minutes cause you don't want it to be boiling like that. And I put uh, just enough water after it's cooled down to get up to kind of the top of the sponges and then I add a half a cup of hydrogen peroxide and then I let it sit until the water is room temperature and that usually ends up being you know 15-30 minutes um, and then they have been de-germed and sanitized for use so uh, remember don't use boiling water every time but I did use boiling water on the first uh, sanitizing for these um, and it works great the most common thing people use these for that I'm aware of, uh, the most common use for them is as an alternative to uh, commercial tampons that are made out of the, the cotton rayon mix. Um, and of course, this being a natural product, it doesn't really have any chemicals in it unless you put chemicals in it. Um, and so that's the appeal for a lot of people who have difficulty or pain using tampons. I have to tell you that this is the most comfortable uh, form of internal flow capture I have ever used. I've never used anything this comfortable. Um, it's not only that you can't feel it, it's just insertion is easy, removal is easy, um, and while they're there you don't really feel them at all. 
um, you might when they, before I cut them down I could still feel it which is why I cut it down um, I just felt like it was too big once I cut it down to a size that was comfortable for me I, I don't feel these at all um, and insertion and removal is completely discomfort free uh, in my experience. These are marvelous for that. And I really didn't think that I was going to be able to have a positive response to these, but it, it's a very comfortable form of internal flow capture. Um, now, the way that I found after practicing several times uh, that is the most comfortable for me is that I take the sponge and I literally twist it like this so that you get this twist. Because if you just try to insert it like this, you know, if you just want to insert it this way, it works. But the problem that you have is that there's some bunching that can occur, like thus. And then once it gets in there, it starts to expand immediately, and then it's hard, <laughs> and then it's hard to um, get it in there comfortably. So what I found is if you just give it a simple twist like this, and you insert it just with that little twist in there, for some reason, then it stays intact much easier so that you can actually get it into a comfortable position before it gets away from you, basically. Um, I have a low cervix, so for me, I did not need to add a string or any kind of retrieval method. They were always close enough to external that I had no difficulty removing these. Um, any way that I used them, I did not have any trouble removing these. Um, kind of like with menstrual cups, if you have a higher cervix, you may have to bear down to get it to come down to where you can comfortably remove it. Or um, I've seen people do a, a on a YouTube video where they just took like a big yarn needle and they inserted a piece of uh, unwaxed dental floss, which I just, one of the big things that I did not like about tampon use just in general was the string because the string is so unbelievably unsanitary. And that's why I just know with the string on the tampons. So I was really grateful that I could use this without that sort of a thing. Um, but that would definitely be something that people with a higher cervix might need to consider. It would depend on how far your tampons tended to travel up inside your body when you were using conventional tampons. And you know, that's just kind of an assessment you'd have to make for yourself. So even with higher cervix ladies, if you're tampons, if your commercial cotton type tampons sat lower in your body, then these will probably do the same. That was my experience with them. Okay, yeah, see, they're spongy and soft and squishy. <laughs> these have just been sanitized, as in the video. When you receive them, they will be dry. Um, you don't want to do like this or be rough with them when they're dry. Um, before insertion, you get them damp, and then you squeeze as much water out of them as you can. Um, that's one of the reasons they're so comfortable, is that when you insert them, they're slightly damp. Um, they're mostly dry. It feels dry, but there, there's moisture in there. Um, now, this has pluses and minuses. Number one, it makes the sponge incredibly soft, so your body, and, and because they're already a little damp when you put them in there, um, I, my experience with it was is that there was none of the discomfort or dry, from dryness that I experienced with commercial tampons, um, because it just didn't pull fluid like that. Um, <clears throat> I was able to wear these for about two hours, which is about what I could wear a conventional tampon for. I have a super heavy. Oh, there goes the skipping. I have a super heavy flow, so that was what I expected. It's going to be about the same amount of time that you could wear a conventional tampon. But there's one thing about the dampness that I consider a con or a negative aspect of using these, and I'm going to start a new clip to talk about that. It is a possibility that the reason I experienced this is because I was doing something wrong, um, but it didn't seem to matter how much water I squeezed out of these before I inserted. Um, over the hour or two of wearing this, what would happen is that when it finally got saturated, and and I could tell that it was time to change, um, I don't see how anybody could wear one of these without a pad back up. And the reason I say that is because, you know, once it finally gets full, um, it's going to leak as a regular tampon would, but the fluid is also going to be mixed with water uh, because there's water in the sponge that mixes with the fluid as it absorbs. And so it becomes a much thinner liquid than menstrual fluid that hasn't been mixed with water. Um, and so I would have much more, um, I don't know how, what's, what's the accurate adjective to describe it? The pad would get covered more. It wouldn't be just spotting like you would get with viscous menstrual fluid. 
um, because the fluid was mixed with water in the sponge, when it came out, it had a much more, there was much less, um, I can't talk today, less viscous. There was less viscosity in the liquid. So it was more like water than it was like menstrual fluid in thickness. And so instead of just getting a drip, you get a drip that spreads out. So you would have to wear a liner of some kind with these. I can't imagine now, maybe that's just me. I'm perfectly willing to say that that might just be me. But in my experience, when I have used these and not gotten there before they started leaking, when they finally leak, um, that lightness of the fluid means that it's gonna leak all over the pad. So you get much more, I mean, the staining isn't bad because it's mixed with water, so it's kind of already watered down. So the staining is not bad, but it spreads out because uh, it's already mixed with water. Um, so you might want to think about that and consider it. If you try one of these, make sure you wear something as a backup until you're sure that that's not going to happen to you. So I think the advantages of, of using these as tampons could be summed up with um, it's completely natural, so there's no weird chemicals in them like there are in typical commercial tampons. Um, they're not going to be contributing to waste in the environment. I mean, it's a sponge. It's completely biodegradable once you finally do discard it and you use it multiple times so you're not throwing plastics and things like that into the landfill. Um, and you're going to put far fewer of these into the landfill than you would with the commercial kinds. Um, they're extremely comfortable. I, I can't stress that enough. I was shocked at how comfortable they were. By far the most comfortable internal collection method I've ever used. And um, you can be pretty confident that you're not harming the environment in any way with these. Um, and the only con that I could even offer, um, and you can use them for the same length of time as a regular, as a regular tampon, uh, but the only con that I could offer for these um, is that they they just tended to cause spread when they did leak. So, you know, if you were wearing a tampon in the past, like a regular commercial tampon, and you had a leak like an oopsie, you know, it would usually be a very small thing that you were dealing with, and it was pretty easy to deal with. Um, but with these, I found that it just, because of the watery nature of it after it's been through a sponge, it would just kind of spread out everywhere. So you would definitely need to use a liner as backup um, if your experience with these is like mine. Um, so for tampons, I, I do highly recommend them. If you are not comfortable with cups or you can't find a cup that fits your body and uh, you're not comfortable with using commercial tampons and you or you find tampons painful or uh, uncomfortable, um, so you're not even up for the disposable organic options, these are brilliant. They, they might be your huckleberry. I, I was really shocked at how much I enjoyed these for that use. Now, the other thing that I used these for, as promised, was Mr. Nix and I gave them a whirl with Mess Free Intimacy. And um, so I'll talk to you a little bit about that. Don't worry. It's not going to get personal. <laughs> well, any more personal. Now, my review on this part of it is completely personal preference, okay? Every couple is different, and so you should try the, the different things that are available to you for this. Um, this guy uh, was the one that I used at first, and it was way too big, and Mr. Nix could feel it, and it, he found it uncomfortable. And to tell you the truth, I found it uncomfortable as well. So, But after I snipped this one down, we tried it again, and he didn't feel it at all, and it was fine. Uh, however, Mr. Nix prefers when I use the soft cup for that. And the soft cup, I've done a review on those, and you can go and see here on the channel how those operate. Um, and I would recommend for couples who are looking for that, um, that you might, you know, and I'll clarify, mess-free intimacy is sex during your menstruating days so that there's no mess to deal with, and you can still be spontaneous. Um, so with, with this one, it was much better, it's much more comfortable. However, they do tend to go further up inside your body than they would if they were just being used as tampons um, for obvious reasons. And um, that kind of freaked me out. I, I was really worried about that because I had trouble finding it and I experienced that. I finally can relate to the high cervix ladies who talk about the moment, moment of panic when they're trying to find their menstrual cup and it's traveled. So that's what happened with the sponge, and I was really worried about that. But honestly, after about half an hour, 
it migrated back where it was supposed to be all on its own. I didn't even have to do anything to, to get it out of there. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that. I've also talked to some other people who have used sponges and read some things about people using natural sponges, and that seems to be the universal experience, is that they do travel up, but then they come back down all on their own, and so you don't have to panic. Basically, you just sit there and cuddle or something for a little while before you go and try to remove it, okay? Um, and so, yeah, they're definitely a viable option for that. Um, they are definite, they definitely keep things clean. Um, the only other thing that, that I would recommend is that, you know, you do have, at least to my knowledge, two major options available for mess-free intimacy, and that is the sponges and there is the soft cup option. So try both of those and see which one you prefer. Uh, you may very well prefer this, and we found it relatively easy to figure out, and it, it did the job. So definitely those two uses I used it for, I can definitely recommend these products for that. Um, there are other things that people use the sponges for, and I'm just going to briefly cover it because I talked about it in my previous video as well. The link for the previous video is down here, so if you watch this and you want to know more about sponges, I talked about all of this stuff more at length in the other video. People also use sponges sometimes for relief of prolapse. There are bladder prolapses and uterine prolapses uh, that make people uncomfortable. Now, I've never experienced that personally. If you have, talk to your doctor about whether or not one of these might work. Um, I read a bunch of different articles on the internet over the intervening four months about people who use uh, sponges uh, for relief from various forms of prolapse in all of the personal areas, whether it was some kind of a, a prolapse that interfered in the vaginal space or whether it was a bladder prolapse. These actually, because you know the urinary tract runs parallel there for a little bit, and if you put one of these inside the vaginal canal, it can actually release pressure on bladder problems as well for some people. So they're very useful for that. And um, I know that there are even larger ones than this for people who need that, but honestly, this thing really, really is pretty large. And so depending on the severity of your problem, you could maybe avoid surgery or maybe if you've had surgery and it was ineffective or you're not a candidate for surgery for some reason to solve one of these prolapse problems. Um, I, I read some articles about people who have used these and they say that they're better than anything else that they've tried. Um, and kind of, you know, several of them, it was kind of emotional for some of these people. They're like, I've gotten my life back from using these. So if you suffer from some kind of a prolapse of that nature, whether it's a, uh, a uterine prolapse or a bladder prolapse, and, you know, look into these and see if they can help you. Um, let's see. I think that's just about it. Well, let me go back and look and see, and if there's anything I left out, I'll come back and talk about it a little more. Okay, no, I think that's just about it. So, um, yeah, they're great products. I do highly recommend them. I did not expect that I, I, I was really worried that I was going to give these a go and that I was just going to be too freaked out by what they are and the, and the whole C thing. I, I really thought that it was going to be an uncomfortable experience for me, but it has not been. Um, once I, once I used them and found out how comfortable they are, um, I'm a fan now. So I definitely recommend that if you haven't tried them and you're open to trying them, that you give them a go. Um, know that uh, you'll come up close and personal with your fluids and so if that's something that you don't want to deal with you know consider it but give it a shot you might find that it's not what you thought it was and it's just not a big deal because I certainly did when I entered this whole reusables universe I, I began to realize that all of these things that we're so afraid of touching and we're so afraid of confronting it's actually you know it can it can make everything about the experience more positive and you get over that contact part of it very quickly. It becomes normal, it becomes old hat. And the, the, the products are, in my experience, just unbelievably more comfortable and they are certainly healthier for your skin and for your body and for the environment. So give these a go um, and we're gonna get into the giveaway. Thanks for watching and um, if you entered the giveaway, it's, up, it's coming up next. Okay, so I have the winners here. And what I'm going to do is I mixed the three up because one of the packages that I have for giveaway has three sponges in it and the other two have only two. And so I've basically just decided that the first, I'm just here, the first one here 
has the three sponges in it. So I've mixed up the cards so I don't know which of the three winners, which I chose with a, num a random number generator. Basically what I did was I took all of the names that entered the giveaway and then I put them on a spreadsheet and then I mixed them all up and then I put a number next to each one of them and then I used a random number generator to pick which number and the name next to that number is one of the winners. And so I did that three times to get three names. So okay, here we go. You ready? The first one, which is this guy here with three of the natural sponges goes to Barb Grummet. Your name will be down here when I announce you. And um, what you do after I've announced your name is you go ahead and send me a message here. If you're a member of the Facebook group, send me the message on Facebook group uh, with your name and your address. And whether or not you're international, I just need the entire complete address so that I can send these out to you. All right, winner number two of these, which is two of the sponges, goes to Sarah Rosencrantz. And the final one, which is just a box, it's exactly the same thing as this baggie here with two. It's just, it comes in the box instead. Those go to Wizard Dreams. And um, so those are our three winners. Let me know if I don't hear from uh, any of the three winners in a week, I will assign a new winner. Um, but congratulations to everybody. Um, send me your addresses and I'll get these in the mail for you. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.